okay so hi guys let's um, uh, come as a uh, again this is this is this part two leukemias okay so we have already discussed how to approach acute leukemia in your university exam in the last video the next video we're going to discuss suppose the examiner gives you chronic leukemia so then how are you going to approach the to the answer so remember guys whenever it is chronic leukemia the age is always going to be elderly okay so in contrast to acute leukemia where the age varies chronic leukemia is a leukemia of elderly okay so usually the history will be revolving around 50 to 60 year old male or female okay now once you know this is the uh, age that has been given okay it's an elderly person 60 years come in front of your exam your mind should immediately start going towards chronic leukemia now as i've already told you in the last video that we have basically two types of chronic leukemias isn't it so we can either have chronic myeloid leukemia or we can have chronic lymphoid leukemia so how are we going to say so see myeloid basically i told you in the last video also it goes for maturation to spleen so these chronic myeloid leukemia patients you will see in your clinics also and you've seen in the clinics also they usually present with massive splenomegaly so once your exam examiner says 60 year old male with massive splenomegaly immediately start thinking of cml whereas when i'm talking about cll okay so this is an elderly person and it has chronic lymphocytic leukemia so this leukemia has a very low proliferation and usually these patients are asymptomatic okay so they are usually asymptomatic okay so they don't have any symptoms so the only symptom that they usually have is fatigability so they'll come with a lot of fatigue you know why because this fatigue is also because this is chronic lymphoid leukemia and you know lymphoid cells are basically they are the ones which later will mature into plasma cells and make antibodies okay so we'll see in the pathogenesis later that they have some dysregulation of proton tyrosine kinase and so therefore they have very high chances of making autoantibodies so because of autoantibodies against rbcs there is a lot of chances of autoimmune hemolytic anemia and because there is destruction of red cells so these patients present with anemia and they can present with anemia and therefore fatigability otherwise they are asymptomatic now whenever we have an, a question and exam and they're giving you a 60 year old male with massive spleen think of cml 60 year old male asymptomatic fatigability think of zr so how are we going to approach the university uh, question so like i told you earlier also first make the diagnosis and then go in the particular headings okay so first is what is the etiology why this is happening second is what is the pathogenesis of this condition what is the pathogenesis of this condition next is there any unique clinical feature which i should know how i am going to diagnose this condition so what is the diagnosis and here in hematology diagnosis always rotates under three headings isn't it what is the morphology what is the special test and what is the diagnosis of choice once you're true with this next is you have to remember is there any prognostic factor that you know if you know it right if you don't know okay then also it's okay remember is there any prognostic factors you know and what can be the therapy of this case if you know so these two are optional findings but till here you must write and you have to draw lots and lots of charts and lots and lots of images okay so now when i'm talking about etiology guys so remember so let's come to this so we have just now talked so i'm going to draw a chart so that you remember an exam and you don't do it wrong and you know that okay this is how i'm going to draw okay right so we have two leukemias here chronic we have cml and we have cll so coming first to the etiology so cml occurs because of reciprocal translocation between chromosome 9 long arm of chromosome 9 and long arm of chromosome 22 so what is present on long arm of 9 abl what is present in long arm of 22 bcr how will you remember see don't forget b is a second alphabet so it lies on 2 so that is why bcr is on 22 okay and this 2 is the most important one so 
22 chromosome is also called as Philadelphia chromosome on the basis of the location where it was discovered. So, therefore, the main, whenever this trans reciprocal translocation between ABL and BCR occurs, whenever the translocation between ABL and BCR occurs, this leads to formation of a chromosome called as Philadelphia chromosome, which is present on chromosome number 22. So, this is called as Philadelphia chromosome. So, this is a change which occurs in the DNA. So, there is a formation of a uh, chromosome. Okay. So, this mutation on the chromosome here is Philadelphia chromosome. Obviously, it is going to produce RNA, isn't it? So, the transcript that is going to be produced is of the size 200 kiloda, uh, kilodaltons. And this causes increase in the tyrosine kinase activity. Okay, so this causes increase in the tyrosine kinase activity. Now, somebody can ask where does this mutation occur? Which is the cell of region? Where is this mutation occurring? So, always remember this point here. Okay, so I am writing it in a box so that you should never ever forget. The mutation occurs in stem cells. Okay, so the mutation here occurs in the stem cells. So, what is the cell of region of CML? Stem cell. The mutation always occurs in the stem cell that you have to remember. Okay, so that is what the pathogenesis on the mutation of uh, CML and it causes stem cell mutation in stem cells. So, there is lot and lot of clot and there is increase in the uh, signal transduction pathway that is tyrosine kinase so it causes proliferation of all the cells okay so it causes proliferation of all the cells you remember i told you in the last video the main pathogenesis of chronic leukemias is usually increased proliferation okay so there is more production of all the myeloid cells okay all the myeloid cells are increased so all of you know what all are the myeloid cells all the wbcs that is your granulocytes okay all the granulocytes comes under this not only that, there is increased proliferation of other myeloid cells. What are the other myeloid cells? Megakaryocytes and RBCs, okay? So, all of them are going to increase in size. So, that is why CML patients are not anemic because the RBCs are also proliferating. Megakaryocytes are also proliferating. Megakaryocytes are the precursors for platelets. So, these patients will have thrombocytosis. They will have increased platelet count also. And because the granulocytes, WBCs are also proliferating, so they are going to have a very high WBC count. They are going to have a very high WBC count. In contrast to uh, in, in contrast uh, to acute leukemia will be discovered. So here in chronic myeloid leukemia, the patient is going to have hyperleukocytosis, very high leukocyte count, thrombocytosis because platelet count is also going to be high and they are not going to be anemic usually okay so that is in the blood counts that you can write everybody clear with the pathogenesis that's the pathogenesis you should write in case of cml draw a diagram okay So, if somebody asks me, ma'am, what diagram should I draw? I always tell you that draw this diagram, okay? So, remember to draw chromosome number 9. Remember to draw chromosome number 22. And show the reciprocal translocation and formation of BCR ABL on chromosome number 22. That is BCR ABL. And remember to label this as a Philadelphia chromosome. And remember the translocation is always in the long arm. So, it is 9Q and 22q okay so that the translocation is between the long arm of chromosome 9 and chromosome 22 and results in philadelphia chromosome is everybody clear with this yes so that's about your uh, that's what you have to write in your um, uh, perfect uh, uh, pathogenesis okay once we are very clear with the pathogenesis of cml now let's come to the lab diagnosis so clinic, uh, clinical features we have already told, told about is it elderly male with massive splenomegaly okay Usually, we'll have a dragging pain in the, uh, in the left hypochondrium. Now, let's look at the diagnosis. So, for diagnosis, we have three headings, morphology, special stain, and diagnosis of choice. Okay. So, what happens in the morphology is because this is bone marrow is producing so many cells. So, bone marrow cannot contain these cells. So, it will spill it out in the peripheral blood. So, there will be a lot of leukocytosis. But there will be all the series of cells which will be coming out in the peripheral blood.